Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Uh, today we're going to make over a few items and we're going to start with this table, this little drop leaf table. And I'm going to begin by painting it uh, in the color buttercream. So I just give this two coats of the color buttercream. And then I'm taking my IOD stamp called Kindest Regards, and I will add that in the description for you, those of you who don't have it, and um, and just kind of randomly stamp here and there on it. And now I'm using my transfer set called Vintage Post, and I'm just going to randomly place uh, some of these pieces on the table as well. And now I want to do some stenciling on it. So I'm just going to use part of this stencil here uh, in the center of the table. And then I'll use part of another stencil on the front of the table. And I'll try to find these stencils and link them in the description. Um, I just like to use these large ones. I, I like to have them because like this one is a good one to use on a, a small round tabletop. And... Um, and then some of the larger ones work well on furniture, but then you're not limited to just that. You can just kind of use parts of it. And I'm using stays on ink here with a makeup brush and using my doing my stenciling in black. And then I'm gonna use some of the color burlap and I'll just use regular chalk paint uh, and a stencil brush and, and do my other color.
Now, I didn't get to film doing the other stencil, uh, but like I said, I'll try to find that in the, um, in, on Amazon and link that in the description if I do. Now, this is a little picture um, that I texture painted at one time, wasn't happy with the color, and uh, was going to redo it at some point. Well, I guess this is the time that I'm going to do it. So, I've mixed a color here. What I wanted was the color sage green, and unfortunately, Dixie Belle doesn't have this color or anything close to it. So I just kept mixing colors until I got it. What I started with was the color Rebel Yellow, and then I added some Evergreen to it, and, um, and then just a little bit of Sage, or not Sage Green, a little bit of Collard Greens. And I wish I knew the ratio. I just kind of kept adding until I got what I wanted. And mixing colors just takes patience and uh, practice, but you can usually get pretty good at it if you do it often enough. And I can usually come up with a color that I have in my head if I'm willing to just kind of add a little bit at a time until I get there. And if I feel like the color needs to be a little warmer, I just add a little bit warmer color to it and or cooler, I add a cooler color. Um, it, it really is just a process, but I was really happy with the color that I got here. And all that I'm going to do to this is uh, paint two coats of this color on here. I didn't add any texture because I've already got texture on it from the previous paint job. And uh, so I'm just going to do this. And once it's dry, then uh, I'll go over it with some white wax because I'm still going to have a lot of texture for that white wax to settle into and it just gives this a lot more dimension and color. This little picture of, uh, originally had some sort of print on it. I don't even remember what the print was uh, because it's been so long ago that I painted it. I'm really bad to do that. I'll start with a project and um, I have a vision for it, but when it doesn't happen exactly the way I want it to, then I kind of lose interest in it, and um, it gets stored for a while, and that's just what happened to this one. And my reason for this, for wanting this color of green, is because I feel like this color really looks good with um, lavender. And I've got some lavender floral in my store, and I just wanted to kind of display it, and uh, I just felt like it would look good with this color. Now, this is one of the wall buckets, and if you've watched me long, you've seen me do a few of these actually by now. And uh, so I'm going to do this color on this one, and I'm going to paint the bottom of it the, this color of green. We'll call it sage green. And uh, in the top, will be uh, the color buttercream. Now, I don't always paint inside these buckets, uh, but this one, because I feel like this yellow will really not look good with this, uh, even on the inside, then I'm painting two coats of the color buttercream on the inside and outside of this bucket. Now, don't worry about this black rim around the top. I'll get some on it. Uh, but I don't worry much about covering it good uh, because I'm going to be doing some black distressing on this anyway. Now on this bucket, I want to do some grain sack striping on it. So once it's dry, then I just tape off for some grain sack striping. And if you've not watched me long and haven't seen me do these, um, I love to do these. These give this uh, more of a cottage look. And what I do is I start out with a piece of just regular masking tape in the center. And that's going to be the width that I want my stripe to be, my first stripe. So I tape right down beside that uh, center one, and then I remove the center one, and that gives me a good stencil for that first stripe. And then I just take a stencil brush and 
uh, brush th this color on there and the, the striping here is going to be that same color green. But this method gives you a really clean finish on your stripes. So now you just need to determine how, how wide you want your neck stripes. I like to go thinner on those. And how much distance between this stripe and your neck stripe you want. And that's the good thing about using this masking tape rather than the blue painter's tape is you can see through this. So when you cover that center stripe, you can tell the distance between the stripe and where you're going to tape off for your next stripe, if that makes sense. So you just kind of tape off on each side like that and add a stripe to each side. Now, some people like to add even more, but I just like to stop with three. Um, but you could just kind of keep going with that. And so I'm just adding an, a little narrow stripe on each side. Some people like to go wider on their next stripe. It's totally up to you because these stripes are done in all different sizes. But I just love the look that they give. And then I'll be adding a stamp over the top of this. Um, and it's from the set I See Paris. It's the little B. And uh, I'll stamp that in black right over the top of this, and it just will make a really neat little bucket. Again, just let this dry well before you do your stamping. Now the way I'm doing my distressing on this is just with this stays on ink pad and I'm just very carefully dragging across some of those high spots. I can't really sand on this because for one thing the color underneath is not a good color to distress to uh, but also it is um, if when you sand on metal on metal like this uh, you risk sanding all the way down to the shiny metal and that's not good but I feel like the distressing in black with this because the stamping is in black uh, just really adds a good touch And now this is a bucket that I painted in the same color of green. Uh, it was kind of a galvanized color and it had almost a rusty finish to the little raised design in the front. Uh, but it, I've had these in the store and they sold really well at first a few years ago. And I think they just kind of fizzled out because the galvanized look is just not that in anymore. And, um, so I painted this in that same color of green that I mixed up. And now uh, I'm painting this raised design with very little paint on my brush uh, so that the, the uh, wording on it will still show through. And then I just did a little bit of distressing in black on it and uh, kept that one pretty simple. 
Now, if you haven't seen my peat pot video, I will attach that in the description. Uh, but I made several of these just by painting the pots and uh, decoupaging on the front of them. Some of them I added lace and things like that to. These I just painted and um, decoupaged a napkin on the front. And, um, and now I'm adding a handle from one of these paper bags. I just take the handle off those and I glue it to the inside of the pot. And I just kind of glue it all the way down to the bottom of the inside of the pot. And that gives me some extra strength so that I can add extra glue and it'll stay better. And then it makes it the length that I need it. Now I'm just doing a couple of these to match in this vignette. So that's why I'm adding it to this video. Uh, but I had to make a lot of these today because um, I had, uh, I've actually sold all of them that I made except for just a couple. And it's still early in the season, so I needed several more. So I just decided to make a bunch of them up. But these are the only ones that I'm going to feature in this video. Again, I will attach that other video and give you some more ideas on how to do these. Uh, this is a very, very simple and inexpensive uh, little craft to do. You can buy these on Amazon, and I think I'm using 4-inch pots. You can buy them on Amazon, or I actually picked these up at Walmart. Now, because these are lightweight peat pots, they need some weight in the bottom or else they won't make very good decor because they'll be falling over too easily. What I did in my last video is just mix up some plaster of Paris and pour it a little in the bottom of each. Uh, this one, I just decided to do it quicker and I just took a little river rock and glued in the bottom. Uh, we're at a landscape yard, so I have these on hand. And that was just a quick way for me to add some weight in here without having to wait on that um, plaster of Paris to dry. And you don't have to use the river rock at all. You can just use uh, just any kind of regular gravel or just anything you want to put in there for a little bit of weight that you can glue inside will work because it's all going to be hidden. And then I just add some uh, Spanish moss inside it and kind of glue that in there. And I put some eggs inside it and a little flowers that I hot glue in. And, um, and then that's all that I do to these. So I'm just going to let you watch that process. I hope you guys enjoy this video, and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening, and God bless you and your family.